Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first Total OS Today show here on the terrific LDC Worldwide Network, the Linux Distro Community. As I said, uh, stated, is my first show, and it's great to have all the guests on the show, including my terrific uh, co-host, uh, Spatry. This is uh, the newbies show. We will be discussing anything related to newbies, such as dual booting or maybe even uh, triple booting. And I think Spatry triple boots. I believe he triple boots Arch 1, which, which requires one single Band-Aid, Arch 2, which requires a whole bottle of drugs, and Arch number 3, which requires a certified psychologist. <laughs> but at this uh actually <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that but you know uh the only kind of drugs that i take are over the counter drugs and uh and yes lots of band-aids and neosporin thank you spatch i mean of course i was just kidding not no uh spatch uh, was <laughs> We we know we know that you're just absolutely loving that I had all that those headaches. But let me tell you what I got my Arch system running just beautifully now. I installed all my favorite games, took off the multimedia apps, and now I've got a nice system for my own personal amusement. And I've got a stable setup uh, using Mint 13 XFCE for handling all my multimedia. You know, and uh, so guess what? I'm absolutely loving it. Spatry, actually, that sounds terrific, my man. So let's get started. Why don't you tell us who is on the newbies show? All right. We have Liam Taylor today. We have Nankora and Nasmus. Welcome, one and all. And I'd also like to take this time to thank Valtim and the Linux distro community for having us on the show. And if you are not aware of the Linux distro community, we will have links in the show notes. This is a wonderful place where people can get together. It doesn't matter what operating system you're using, that you can get answers that you're looking for. And there are people here in the community that are always willing to help you find the answers that you need. And uh, it's, it's just a wonderful platform where people just get together, share knowledge, and when everybody gets together to share that knowledge, everyone benefits. Excellent. Thanks for having me. Great to be here, mate. Thanks for having me too. Thank you, one and all. Uh, let me begin briefly. I I invited someone uh, by the name of Joe Steiger. He has a terrific channel uh, on on YouTube. Um, uh, he's not here, but uh, uh, Joe has a medical condition with paralyzed vocal cords. So he was kind enough to send me. Uh, the responses to three specific questions that each guest will have time to answer. And those three questions are, uh, what computer systems are you using now, such as dual booting, uh, how long, and why? And let me take the opportunity first to thank Joe to send the reply. And let me quickly read his reply, and then we will move on to Liam Taylor, 1993. Okay, question number one, what computer systems do you use now? Joe's reply was, I am using the Leonard Extreme from System 76, where I have a dual boot setup with Ubuntu 12.04 and Windows 7. Cool. Question number two, how long? Uh, I have been, Joe's response is, I have been dual booting since April 2008, basically one week after Ubuntu 8.04 came out, so that would make it a little over four years now. And the final question, why, in his response, uh, was I started using Ubuntu because Windows Vista was giving me fits. Surprise! Uh, I would have to do a system restore about every week because my computer would get so bogged down. Uh, doing full reinstalls about every six months. Ooh, uh, Epson didn't have a Vista driver for my printer at the time. Yeah, drivers were an issue back then. Uh, let's see, my brother was using Ubuntu at the time, and I was jealous of the Compass effects. CSO is battery. Uh, easy, easy customizability, slew of free programs, games, etc. You know what? That was Barrel at that time, though. Oh. Those were the Barrel effects at the time. And, you know, interestingly enough, um, I, I want to touch base on some of the things that Joe Steiger had to say, because these are all good things. Um, I've spoken with a lot of people that are using the System76 computers. They're well known for their support for Linux, and uh, they actually sell computers that have Ubuntu on them. 
Now, um, also, you mentioned that he had issues with Vista, and believe me, I had those same issues as well. I really hated it, and I wanted to try something new, and um, I, too, loved the barrel effects at the time, but for I just could not get them working at that time because the you know the the Linux kernel had not matured enough to where it provided support for the ATI card that I was using at that at that particular time. But the thing is, last year uh, in the beginning of uh, 2011, I tried Linux, and then that support was enabled, and you know I was able to use a Linux distribution and dual boot my computer. And the thing is, I was just amazed how well everything worked together. And uh, this was using Linux Mint, um, Ultimate Edition, Pinguy OS, Arch Linux, and now back to my roots again to Linux Mint. Cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, let, let me finish the last paragraph from Joe, then we'll transfer the microphone to Liam Taylor. Uh, to to, to uh, fi finish up the question of why, Joe replied, there are a couple of, we of reasons I have Windows on my system still. For starters, I use Windows for my job. Technically, I don't have to use Windows for it. I would just have to find open source uh, alternative programs to use. I'll go into more detail. That in the second, uh, let me see. I also use Windows to create the text-to-speech files for my Ubuntu t tutorials, which are terrific. Uh, I haven't found a program in Ubuntu that comes even remotely close to the quality of the voice from the Windows program I use. I, I think there should be something now. But anyway, uh, uh, let's see. Well, there is one I could buy for Linux, but it costs $300. Wow. The Windows one only cost me $40. Hmm. While I would love to do all of my video work in Ubuntu, $300 is tough to swallow. Yeah, I, th I, th I think it would be uh, for making uh, text-to-speech files. Uh, I would feel like they are taking advantage. I'll go back and answer why I don't just find another program in Ubuntu for my job. Uh, yes, that could work, but I want to keep my quote-unquote uh, work schedule separate. What I mean is, as most Linux users can attest to, we tend to break our systems a lot. Well, Spatry does. But but we can't leave well enough alone. Geez, sounds familiar, Spatry. Love to tweak and tinker. Hey, this is Spatry's paragraph. There are times when, of course, I tinker too much and break my system. And to finish up, he still has fallback. Uh, occasionally, I use Windows to test hardware as well. Okay, uh, Liam Taylor, 1993. Uh, three questions for you. What OS you're using, how long, and why? Um, I actually dual boot uh, Ubuntu 12.04 with uh, Windows 7. Um, I've been using Windows uh, Windows XP was the first one I used actually. Well, it was about um, eight years old, so that's the first time I ever started actually getting getting into computers. But Windows 7, I've been in since it first came out, sort of thing, um, which was uh, great for me time because Vista was kicking my um, behind. Um, Ubuntu 12.04 I've actually had on my computer for two and a half, well not 12.04 but I um, started off with uh, 10.04 I think about a year and a half ago. Okay. Uh, I didn't mention uh, Armageddon uh, made a comment on uh, something that uh, Steiger had said that he does agree very much that accessibility on Linux is lacking and I have to agree with this assessment because the thing is uh, Windows does have a lot better uh, voice uh, fonts or uh, voice simulations and I know which one he uses and um, that was actually the, 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 the voice simulation that he uses was one that I used to use for my freelancer game not freelancer but uh free space uh for uh mods and that sort of thing because it would uh speak the text and that sort of thing for the game so um it's yeah unfortunately it, it you know windows has an edge there but i would like to see more improvements with accessibility in linux I, i'd have to agree that that would be an, a major need there okay and nancora you're next yep Hello, I'm Nankura. I've been using uh, w Windows since back in the days of MS-DOS, actually. I remember I used to watch my brother and his friend hook up their computers and play uh, floppy disk games such as Masters of Orion and... Um, uh, I remember those. Zed. Yes, and Zed, the f one of the first ever RTSs on MS-DOS, and I've been using Windows ever since. But halfway through win using Windows as we progressed through XP, and XP was great, and Vista started coming out, I started to really 
despise Windows and what they were doing, the decisions Microsoft were making and not listening to what people actually want in an operating system. So I moved towards Linux and I actually started Linux in FreeSpire and I was on and off for quite a few years with FreeSpire. The uh, click and run was pretty impressive because I was always afraid of Linux because I wasn't one for terminal work. I wasn't one for uh, manual coding and all that sort of stuff back then. I was just a gamer, so I was a bit afraid to get into it because everyone told me that it was a lot of manual labor. But once I saw the click and run that FreeSpire introduced and I started to get into other distros such as Mandriva, etc., and um, Ubuntu, I saw how Linux was really, really progressing into the more user-friendly stage. And now I am dual booting Windows 7 and uh, Ping iOS, being, mainly for usability, I use Ping iOS, and uh, it's, it's, it's got everything pre-installed, and it's extremely enjoyable to use for me, but I have to dual boot to Windows 7 still, because as I've mentioned before, I'm a gamer, and there's a lot of games which do not run in Linux straight out of the box. You have to wait for updates, wait for Wine to catch up, etc., and um, so unfortunately, I'm forced to do that, because gaming is my forte and um, but hopefully soon we see more games come into Linux especially with Steam being released to Linux which I wish I believe will be a catalyst to more big titles being released natively on Linux so hopefully we see that in the future and that's definitely something I'm looking forward to. Uh, I'll believe that when I see it and they've been saying for a long time that they're gonna port Steam over now maybe we're starting to see something happening because I guess they're now in an alpha or beta phase and that sort of thing but they've been saying that for a long time so I still say I'll believe it when I see it <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely I definitely agree with you that I've been watching it for many years and they've been saying it but hopefully we're starting to see actual screenshots of games running in Linux from Steam so hopefully we actually see something happening soon. Definitely, definitely hoping for that. Hello everybody, I'm Nasmus Kandekar and um, I've been dual booting uh, Linux and Windows uh, for quite a while now. Um, so basically the first time I actually decided to try Linux is not because, unlike everyone else, that I start despising Windows. Um, that's simply because I just wanted to go ahead and try a different operating system. Um, it's basically because um, I don't have to hate something to want to switch. Uh, I just uh, I saw people, you know, commenting and you know talking about Linux on YouTube, special specifically. So I thought, all right, all right, I'll give it a try. Uh, that was the day of Ubuntu nine. Uh, Ubuntu 8 and 9, those are the days. Uh, not very early, early, early actually. It's recently, I think it was 2009 or 2010. Um, so I decided to go ahead and download it. That's the first experience I had. Um, I did it inside using the Ub something uh, Ubi method. I, I don't know if I'm pr pronouncing it right, where you actually install uh, Ubuntu directly within Windows using an installer, and you could dual boot and then uninstall using the add remove feature in Windows. Um, so at first I was f totally off. I had no idea what I was doing, and I, I couldn't install programs. I didn't know about the soft software center. Soon I did uh, learn to use it in a bit, but I actually deleted Ubuntu because I was uh, pr I was really frustrated for a while trying to figure out how things work. Um, but something really changed when I saw that Unity interface. Now I know people hate it just like they hate Windows 8, but I, I, I guess I could provide a, in, a different perspective here because I have never used Linux and I had no idea what the heck was going on or how to do anything. Yes, there's lots of tutorials and I did did work with the terminal a little bit to uh, to install a program, but um, but the Unity interface it looked very simple. I know tweakers didn't like it because it limited in a way what people could do, but for me that that actually broke the barrier for me to use Linux. I know, uh, actually, uh, because of the Toss Today podcast or show on YouTube, I did learn of Soren OS, and it was that's how I experienced Soren OS. But for me, it looked too much like Windows. I mean, if I want to try Linux, I want to try Linux that is that is itself. Uh, Zorin was great, but it looked like Windows 7. So you know, why we use something that looks like Windows when I have Windows? So uh, if I'm gonna try Linux, I was gonna try you know Linux as it is. So I after I downloaded and installed Ubuntu 11, and I have been loving it ever since. There's bugs, but 
it's still way better than what I had experienced with Linux uh, Ubuntu 9. Um, then I did try Linux Mint and I dual booted, I currently dual boot Ubuntu and Windows, Windows 8 actually. Um, I used to, I used virtual machines to uh, run Linux Mint and Zorin but um, I actually love Ubuntu because how simple it is, how easy it is. Um, and the great thing about Linux is there are more, you could say, nerdy Linux or geeky or complicated Linux distros for the geeks to try out. But Ubuntu is one of those that at least it lets a new user to get into Linux. And I have to be really thankful for Canonical. So I, th uh, yeah, so that's my how I started with Linux. Um, so I believe the second question is how long. So as I guess I answered that is uh, 2008 or 2009, sorry. And the third question is, why? Well, as I said, it's because I want to try a different operating system. Um, I loved Windows, and I still love Windows, and I wanted to try Linux. I could, n I did not want to pay a thousand dollars for a low-level Mac just so I could try OS X. There's no way I was going to do it. So uh, Linux was a great choice. So I tried Linux, and it's it's pretty. It's, the experience is pretty great. Uh, so what I could say is Linux is perfect for new users. I mean Ubuntu is perfect for new users and Linux is very flexible. Uh, currently I'm dual booting Ubuntu and Windows 8 as I mentioned. I replaced Windows 7 nine months ago when the developer preview of Windows 8 came out. Um, I installed it on my physical PC and have been using Windows 8 um, as my primary desktop for both work and play and browsing the net and I have to say it it has it hasn't crashed it hasn't seen a major crash for past eight months um, so I have been very happy with Windows um, uh, while I'm on topic of Windows I'm going to give some quick uh, I guess quick comments on the new uh, Windows and uh, the hate that's going around and the love that's going around uh, it's it reminds me of the Unity and the, how the Linux people backlash to the United, Unity interface but I really think um, again I'm looking from the view of a new user the thing the reason that the iPad the iPhone and the Android smartphone took off so fast it is art selling desktop PCs is because it was so simple to use and people just got it there was no man need for manuals there was no need for a uh, tutorial people just got it I think Microsoft wants to go in the drought of yes limiting customizability and going for a simple user interface versus flexible and for the geeks I think that's what Linux is for so yes, at first when I installed Windows 8, I was very, I was very shocked. I had no idea what was going on. How do I get to the Start menu? How do I launch my programs? Where's my, uh, where's uh, Notepad? Where's, th this is so weird. But after using it for nine months, it's pretty, it's, it's. I've gotten used to it. I could quickly search for programs, open it. So I think it's a matter of getting used to it. Or at the same time, I think the newbies or uh, the less experienced computer PC users are going to love Windows 8, and I think. People who are more of a geek type like me when it comes to um, working with uh, developer programs like Visual Studio, there's going to be a quick learning curve and willing to accept the giving away a little bit of flexibility in terms of user friendliness. I, I, I think uh, I'm pretty so everyone else are geeks and I'm a geek, but I think people just should give Ubuntu, Ubuntu or Linux Mint or Join OS a try. Um, I, I I love Linux. I love Windows. I love Linux, and I can't wait to see what where it goes in the future in terms of mobile, Android, and the cloud. So thanks, Nasmus. Thank you. Yeah, let me just say that I I choose to dual boot because for me it's all about freedom of choice, and to me Linux above all else it's it's fun. You know, it's it's customizable. You have you know many choices. My Linux distribution of choice right now is Ubuntu, although I still enjoy recommending, you know, Zorin, Linux Mint, and I know Spatry loves Pingai, but the, my, I'm using Linux more and more. I guess, I guess the best analogy I can use is Linux is my Ferrari, but if something breaks on the car, you know, and I can't stop, you know, Windows 7 is my emergency parachute, my emergency brake. And I dual boot, number one, because it's fun, but I still have to because, you know, Linux is not quite there, at least for me, as a full 100% full-blown replacement 
operating system. So I use Windows 7 when I have to. And, you know, and the best example would be about a month or two ago, I had an issue with ATI drivers. My system crashed. I just rebooted back into Windows 7, reinstalled Ubuntu 12.04 with the Zorg drivers. Not a problem. So I enjoy using both. Uh, for me, number one, it's freedom of choice. And I think both operating systems are fine. As far as Linux goes, for newbies, I will still recommend uh, Zorn OS 6 as my number one choice, if, if at all, if simply because uh, it looks like Windows. And if somebody knew if it looks like Windows, they will use it. They may not keep it, but at least they will use it. So, I'm in. Okay. Uh, first, I'd like to jump in real quick. Uh, first, I want to mention that uh, Joe finally was able to make it and uh, join us. Welcome, oh, yes. Joe. It's good to have you on the show here. Yeah, and um, uh, I'd like to share my uh, two cents worth on this. Uh, I've been using computers for about 30 years, uh, since before uh, Microsoft even came out with anything that was really usable. Uh, I remember my first computer was a ColecoVision Atom that you plugged into the television. That was a long time ago, and then I've been through uh, DOS and, and everything. And, um, you know, uh, Windows is a wonderful operating system. You'll never hear me say on my show, don't use it. You know, and uh, the thing is, I have a need from time to time to uh, run Windows when I want to play some of my favorite games. I spend a lot of money on good software, and I will you know run windows from time to time i just find that i don't run it as often because the free and open source offerings that are available out there nowadays is just absolutely magnificent i cannot sing the community enough praises for the softwares that they are offering and i'm literally able to make a you know i was able to make a really nice transition over time uh, from proprietary software to free and open source and you know some of the proprietary software that I just can't uh, seem to divorce myself from runs beautifully under wine and uh, you know some of the games that I have uh, are older games and those work under wine well too. It's just that newer games like The Witcher and some other uh, RPGs like that I found that you know I'm pretty much I got to be married to a, a Windows partition and that sort of thing. So, you know, but I just don't see myself using it quite as often. Uh, something I, a lesson I've learned with with uh, uh, Ubuntu and Linux Mint and stuff like that is um, it is really really customizable and, and great to uh, do all that sort of stuff with. And I I had um, my Linux Mint uh, desktop I had I'd customized to the point where it wasn't even recognizable anymore and it was exactly how I wanted it. Um, but I actually don't have it anymore because it um, it broke on me. Uh, I think I had uh, something installed, or whatever. But somehow the 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 X server and Zorg drivers just completely disappeared and went along with half of the configuration files. So I ended up with no OS left on that. So yes, be careful with that. I'd say to people. But other than that, Linux is great fun to uh, use, and you can turn it into whatever you want. Nankura. Yeah, no doubt. I definitely agree with that. And um, like Spatry, I, I have to dual boot for certain games which don't run out of the box on Wine. But definitely Lynx is developing the game area. So to gamers coming from a gamer who's been playing from absolute years, I've been, been on the professional side of gaming. I've been on the newbie side. As a gamer, don't be afraid to try Linux because once you actually learn how to use Wine, once you actually learn how to... Uh, use a lot of um, emulating pro em emulation or non-emulation programs that come with Linux that run games for Windows. You'll find that a lot of your old games and some new ones will work, and it's quite a fun experience to actually get them working. You feel quite accomplished when you do. So don't be afraid, gamers, to give Linux a try. Let me just say that my Xbox 360 handles all of my gaming news, uh, the gaming needs. Uh, I love Bingo. Surprise, right, Spatry? Hey, what could I say? Me and my son enjoy playing Halo, and Halo 4 is going to freaking rock. Let me tell you, okay? Too bad. You, too bad uh, Xbox has been banned. <laughs> well, we'll see how long that lasts. Politics will kick in and make you very disappointed, Spatry. <laughs> well, I, no, I'm just uh, all teasing aside. You know, once, once they get rid of these stupid little patent laws and everything that we've been yeah. talking about all along... You know, then innovation's going to open up, and we're going to be seeing a lot of great technologies coming to us, you know, and they need to get rid of those, you know, once all that stupid 
parlor tricks has been, you know, abolished, then we're going to start really seeing some wonderful things heading our way. I totally agree. I can't wait for the software parent to die. They just need to die a horrible, torturous death. <laughs> From a show, what are you talking about? We see here have the beer and play some games. PDQ says copy left for the win. L O L. Quick, thank you to all of the guests. Uh, Joe Steiger, I know you popped in late. I I want to have you on again on another show. Uh, I did read your comments at the start of the show. Thank you for popping in. Thank you, Liam Taylor, 1993. Thank you, Nankura. Thank you, Nasmus, of course. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. And of course, Battery, my wonderful partner. Thanks to all of you who are listening and who take the time out of your busy lives to listen to us beyond here in our respective channels. Of course, the uh, Toss Today um, channel and Spatry's Cup of Linux. Spatry, uh, we did good on time. Do you think we have a little, uh, little time for like a little bonus show? And now it is time for Sunday Night News and Nonsense with yours truly and Total OS today. Say Total OS today. Were you aware of the fact that um, that Apple actually beat uh, HTC in the courts in um, the United Kingdom? I believe I caught something on the news, but fill us in, please. Yes, HTC has won an important case against Apple in the United Kingdom. The court ruled that HTC did not infringe uh, four Apple patents, including the infamous slide to unlock. Four Apple claims that, uh, that the court threw out of the window include unlocking a device by performing gestures on an unlock image, portable radio communication apparatus using different alphabets, uh, portable electronic device for photo management, uh, related to multiple and single touch gestures and a portable electronic device for photo management and um, um, I believe the uh, judge um, uh, went on to say that you know these are obvious things that should be available on all hand sense head sense and uh, and this and the, the thing is they feel that you know uh, Apple is using these attacks because they know that they're losing in Markle's market share. Spatry, rumor has it that in, in the courtroom was Linus Torvalds giving his universal Linux love finger to the court. Is this true? <laughs> you know, it, the judge could have been Linus Torvalds in disguise. <laughs> oh, I read backwards. That's what it was. Well... <laughs> I mean, all these, you know, we, we briefly talked about patents and stuff. It is getting a bit overboard. You know, everybody who's involved in, in this type of politics, please play nice. But, all right, speaking about Apple, Spatry, did you know that I believe this month marks the 50-year anniversary of the Apple iPhone? Did you know that? Oh, really? I believe it was five years ago this month that Apple introduced the latest gadget at the time, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but back then, wasn't it like brand new? And because it was brand new, it was like $6,000. And then following year, it was like $500. So people got suckered into buying this at full price. But uh, all kidding aside, Apple did spark a revolution in the way people communicate to each other. Of course, now we have Android, which I think in many ways is better. Oh, much better. Uh, I use an I use uh, I use a Motorola type uh, phone, um, Android operating system, and I love it. But yeah, this what this is five years ago. I boy, how time flies! That Apple introduced really, it was a brilliant move. It was a brilliant marketing move. It was. It still is a quality product. Um, they started a revolution. They started something that the people were just itching for something new, something cool. And they are making a buku loads of money. You know what? And speaking of phones, did you know Amazon is now uh, getting in the uh, cell phone market? Uh, Amazon is reportedly working on its own Android-based smartphone. Uh, Bloomberg published a story last week, and now Wall Street Journal has also reported the existence of Amazon smartphones. According to their sources, the device is being tested with Asian suppliers and can go into mass production later this year or next year. Now, um, geez, don't we have enough Android phones on the market? 
Not yet. <laughs> hey, well, with 900,000 activations per day, as Linux, as Linus Trevals has said, uh, we have seen just a little bit more than some measure of success. I have to, I have to tell you guys, I'm just picking this, this off the news wire. Speaking of phones and patents, ev apparently a court has ordered RIM research in motion the court orders room to pay 147 million damages for infringing on certain patents boy can blackberry catch a break <laughs> i think blackberry's uh dying a slow death how many uh, you know i don't know very many people that are using those devices or at least here locally you know, personally who will use blackberry is the president of, of, of the united states uh, ready for the president. Not personally, but even that's what I hear. But uh, anyway, oh, and one more thing. The last thing, speaking of Apple, there was a rumor that they're, they're going to come out with a 7-inch tablet, uh, I would imagine, considerably less than, than the $500, $500 price tag. I'm Whoopee! <laughs> I'm assuming because Google has come out with their... Uh, What's it called? The Nexus 7 tablet? Yeah, you know, look, follow the leader, follow the follower, follow where the money goes. I don't know, but uh, you know what? The the iPad is, is a fine product. I won't be buying one anytime soon, but uh, anyway, that's it. Apple's going to come out, rumored a 7-inch tablet to be released in the fall. Let's do anything else. Oh, um, let me see what else I have. Did you know that Chrome apps can access a webcam without a plug-in now? It opens the doors to immense possibilities for developers to create open and standard-based apps which can use your webcam and microphone. I read somewhere that, that there's an Android app that you can download that tells whether your phone is male or, or female. Now, if that's even possible, why would you want to know? <laughs> So that they can target appropriate advertising for you. Uh, my philosophy is if you have an Apple iPhone with Siri and it talks too much to you, that is definitely a female. <laughs> it'll, it'll go nicely with that prototype uh, Samsung with the uh, electric shaver that you've been using lately, right? Oh, you mean the, uh, the uh, we spoke about this, the Sony smartwatch. <laughs> yeah. Combination shaver, toaster, probe, and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, I think we had a little bit of fun with that. Okay, well, that's all the news I've got, but I'm sure you've got to have some nasty little story uh, hiding uh, uh, in the background there. And please don't bring up dinosaurs again. I don't have any surprise off-the-wall story for tonight. But I'll Boo! Hey, I'm sorry. It's been a long day, okay? What do you want me to tell you? Jeez, <laughs> these Boy, these Southerners, they're never satisfied. Let me tell you something, Tony, okay? But no, I, I think that's all I have for this evening, so. All right, that's all I've got, too. You are the weakest link, Total OS, today. Goodbye! <laughs> Thank you all. Goodbye. <laughs>